Pasta is one of the world's most delicious carb sources. However, there's many potential mistakes that can keep you from achieving true pasta nirvana in the home kitchen. In order to help us all make better pasta, I collated a list of 10 common steps that are critical in achieving better pasta at home. Also, stick around to the end of the video and I'll show you why I came up with this list. Anyway, let's hop into number one, which is choosing the right pasta. One of the reasons why pasta is a great dish to make at home is because it's so cheap. A one pound box of dried pasta can usually run you less than a dollar, but for an extra dollar or two, you can get a much better product that makes a fairly big difference once it's plated. Here's two boxes of Barilla pasta. One is their cheapest version and then one is their more expensive line, about a dollar more. When you compare the noodles, you can see how the cheap noodle is kind of shiny and smooth. When you compare that to the rough kind of chalky finish of the more expensive one. What this means is that the sauce will stick much better to that rough and starchy texture compared to the cheaper noodle. In summary, what you want to look for in a dried pasta is a fairly rough finish. Terms like bronze cut or slow dried on the box are good indications of quality pasta. With our rough pasta selected, let's talk about something that is often overlooked in the pasta process, and that is the pot you are using. In general, stainless steel is the most used pot, but the shape of the pot matters too. Here are the two pots that I'll typically use for pasta. If I'm making a tall pasta that likes spaghetti, I'll go for the tall one. If it's something short like rigatoni or macaroni, I'll go for the shorter pot. The reason why is you want to get the whole pasta in the water as soon as possible. If you have a really shallow pot and drop in some spaghetti, you know, half the spaghetti is going to be hanging out while the other half slowly sinks in. Depending on the pot, this can lead to slightly unevenly cooked pasta. Let's talk water. So conventional wisdom would say to use a large pot and a large amount of water, but turns out it's actually not quite that simple. Let me run a little experiment with two different amounts of water. One has one and a half quarts of water for a half pound of pasta, and the other has three quarts of water for half a pound of pasta. The first observation we see is that obviously less water boils faster, around seven minutes for one and a half quarts, and around 14 minutes for three quarts. Now the next big difference is in the starch content of the water. Now let me pour a glass of the pasta water. You will see that the one that used less water is much more cloudy than the one that used more water, and that is the starch level of the pasta water. The higher starch concentration has more thickening power, which can lead to a cohesive and better consistency sauce when we pour the pasta water into the sauce. So based on this simple experiment, you can kind of make the conclusion that if we want to use our pasta water in the sauce, we should try to make it starchy as possible. Most boxes will tell you to use something like four to six quarts of water for a pound of pasta. However, I like to use three quarts or just around three liters. Now that we have the right amount of water, let's talk about salt. I think salting your pasta water is fairly mainstream at this point, but getting the right amount of salt is what we're after. I don't want to see anyone adding a dainty pinch of salt and telling me that they salted their pasta water. Instead, what we are looking for is roughly a 1% salt solution. The pasta water should actually taste salty so it can flavor the pasta. So for three liters of water, I use 30 grams of salt, which is about 1.5 to two tablespoons if you are using Morton's Coarse Kosher Salt. Now, this doesn't mean you need to bust out the measuring cups or your scale. I've actually weighed out my four finger pinch salt because I'm nerdy like that and know that each one is roughly 10 grams or half a tablespoon. And seriously, try weighing out your various salt pinches. It's actually kind of a fun little experiment and you'll know how much salt you are adding to your dishes. So we have the right pasta, we have the right pot, we have the right amount of water. That water has boiled and we added the right amount of salt. Can we finally add our pasta? Yes, but first you want to talk to Alexa. Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. I like to set a timer for one to two minutes less than the package says. And this is a really good habit to get into because it takes the guesswork out of cooking pasta. Instead of pulling out a loose noodle like five or six times to test the doneness or throwing it on a wall, set the timer, test the pasta once, and then you can drain it. Even with the pasta timer set, that doesn't mean you can walk away just yet. The first few minutes when you drop the pasta in the water are critical to avoid pasta that sticks. When we drop the pasta into the water, the excess starch on the outside immediately starts to hydrate and gel together, leading to pasta that sticks together. 
we can easily get rid of this problem by stirring the pasta four to five times in the first few minutes. If you don't stir your pasta, this is what can happen. We don't want that. So the timer is done and the pasta is perfectly al dente and ready to drain. But before you do, make sure you scoop a cup of pasta water off the top. As discussed earlier, the starches in the pasta water will help the sauce bind and stick better to the pasta itself. To show you how to use it, let's move on to the next tip. Up to this point, we've been completely focused on the pasta, but you better be sure that your sauce is ready as soon as that pasta is drained. The longer the pasta sits, the more it will get gummy and kind of start to stick together. And don't throw oil on it because then the sauce won't stick to the pasta. Plus, there's usually already oil in the sauce already, so we don't really need more. For a lot of basic preparations, lay your sauce down in a pan and add your freshly drained pasta and stir it in. Then you're gonna pour in some of that pasta water to help everything bind together and cling to the pasta. Remember how we set that timer for one to two minutes less than what the box said? Now is the time to finish it. Feel free to cook the pasta in the sauce for up to a minute or so, give it a taste for the al dente tooth feel and season it with any extra salt if needed. Our pasta is finally ready to be plated, but don't forget to give it a garnish. Freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano is the Italian standard for most pasta dishes. For a little freshness, I like adding things like fresh minced parsley and a crank of black pepper for some bite. And that, my friends, is a delicious bowl of pasta. So we have covered all the basics to making a delicious and better bowl of pasta at home. So now it's time to announce the pasta series that will be coming to the channel. It's gonna be four to five episodes showcasing some classic pasta dishes that you guys can add to your kitchen rotation. I'm planning to cover versions of a basic tomato sauce, which will kind of lead us into a penne alla vodka. I also think I'm gonna be doing carbonara and I will definitely be doing kind of a homemade blue box style mac and cheese. But if you guys have any extra pasta dishes that you want me to cover, feel free to drop them in the comments below and I will try to do so. But that is gonna wrap it up for this one. Make sure you guys stay up to date and subscribed on the channel to make sure you can see all the pasta videos that will be coming out. But that is going to wrap it up for me in this one. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.